Hello and a very good evening. Welcome to Crafters TV. My name's Ben Mosby and thank you for joining us uh, for our silly Saturday. Um, it's Craft Vault once again, bookending the day. Uh, start the day with the Craft Vault, end the day with the Craft Vault and uh, yeah, tuck it into a cup of coffee because it's, it, it's been a busy old day today, I tell you what. Um, we had so much fun. Started off with the Craft Vault. The craft vault that we've got here kind of mirrors that a little bit earlier, so I'll tell you about that. Then we had launch day with uh, the brand new um, rotating stamps, which were just flying out of the door. Then, of course, we've just done Craft House, um, just finished that over an hour ago, with the brilliant Michelle from New Jersey, and I had so much fun with that. And here we are back again uh, with the craft vault. Uh, producer Johnny um, is in the gallery with uh, Charlotte, who's uh, on the buttons and the joystick. Johnny, so you know, just so that he's, uh, you know, sort of sorting himself out of a weekend he's there with a beer cracked it open seven o'clock <laughs> seven o'clock beers in the gallery um so that's what it is all about and uh we are here to bring you another brilliant <laughs> you're gonna get an email aren't you monday you're not really drinking beer in the gallery are you nope yes he's not um, or is he? Um, <laughs> and we are bringing you this craft bolt, which is brilliant because we're bringing you little bundles where you are paying uh, full price for one item. However, the second item that you get in the bundle is only one, one P. P. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, they've made these bundles up, the one P items are just you know, things that we don't really want or things they're just trying to get rid of. Think again, because Wait till you see what we can bring you on this show. It is not just me over the course of the final hour of the day. Uh, she's been my partner in crime right throughout the, the day today. And we've had a brilliant day, Jan, haven't we? It has. It's been great, honestly. It seems ages since this morning. Yeah. It really does. It's been a very long day. <laughs> but yeah, we're back all raring to go again. Last hour, last live hour of our day today. And we've still got those, uh, those deals on offer that were available if you missed them this morning. So if you're just joining us for the day, welcome. Ooh. Um, it is going to be fast and it is going to be furious. We're going to try and concentrate on some of the items that we didn't concentrate on earlier on in the craft box. So if you saw the earlier show, you should see some uh, different demos. Just before we get through to those demos, and let me tell you what's coming up on the show. Franz in from Florida, Liz from Scotland, Cindy uh, from NC, Tina from Brighton, Will from Hastings, Linda from Maryland, and we've got a newbie watching, Julie Wen. First time, uh, apparently. Well, welcome, Julie. Thank you welcome. for... Welcome. Um, for joining us here on Craft Vault. Right, so this show, as we said, uh, we have got bundles where you've got penny deals within the bundle. However, bad news, oh no, oh. bad news. The Sara Signature Rose Blooms Embossing Collection, don't scream and shout, but that's now... Sold out. Gone. Oh no, I've got a lovely demo with that as well. Oh, oh. put that one away, put that in the bag. So that means uh, we're down to three. Three demos Ooh. on the show. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Uh, we can just throw the sea shanty in a few times if we get stuck <laughs> for things to do. Uh, but let's show you what else we've got. We won't get stuck. Let's show you what else we've got on the show uh, because we've got some brilliant deals. But that's a warning to you. Let that be a warning that you will need to snap these up very, very quickly indeed. So the Spectre Noir Cool Christmas um, Collection, we demoed this earlier on in the um, earlier show, proving very popular. So you're going to get your um, Cool Christmas liquid inks, your sparkle inks, which are absolutely gorgeous, included in the collection. You have got your frosted rose, you've got your uh, winter plum and your icy blue. So you get those and then for free, or not for free, for 1p, you get the um, uh, Deck the Halls Christmas stamp collection, which is the gorgeous Christmas tree you're seeing there with the baubles, the Deck the Halls sentiment, uh, and of course you've also got Enjoy the Wonders of the Season. £13 all told, 19.96, and of course, uh, as it's our taste of the next level event, if you're platinum or indeed new, your first shop, I should say, 25% off that. £9.75 p or $14.99 on that collection. Um, next up then, yes, the rotating board. This has been so popular over the last few days, actually. Super handy to have. And uh, for those of you who've already got it, tell everybody else why this board is so amazing because um, it really, really is stunning. You're getting this today uh, for £16 or $20 because we're throwing in your uh, watercolour card for 1p. Yep, you're getting 15 sheets of that for a penny within this particular bundle, usually 19 98 or 24 
five dollars 16 pounds or 20 dollars today saving 20 percent plus a further 25 if you are a platinum member um 12 pounds yeah it comes down to in fact or 15 dollars which really is crazy value for money on that the uh, foiled frame again this was a big hit on the earlier show if you're into your foiling if you've got your foil press machine this is a brilliant really brilliant bundle uh you're getting the frame for a penny they've done this a wrong way around haven't they it's for, worth 14.99 right so you're getting that for a penny see and the foil i don't really understand don't try and understand this with me because i can't but you're getting the foil okay which is your uh spangles what's it called silver spangles, silver spangles for four it's all four pounds or 496 save it over 75 percent definitely the wrong way around but don't worry in fact i'm just being told now by producer johnny that that is limited stock there's green on the screen which means it soon won't be seen do you know that one jan what green on the screen yeah soon won't i have be heard seen. that one okay yes i'll be okay so i go it's limited stock Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, I thought you, you were watching. Do you know he never gives me any warning? Sorry. I'm like, I'm just expected to jump in with these things, these little ditties, and I never know. <laughs> Tell me again, then. It's green on the screen. So I've got two. So you've got, you've got. Don't scream and shout. But it's now sold out. Sold out. I know yeah. that one. Okay. Yeah. And the limited stock one. It's green on the is, screen. So I go. It's limited stock. And I go. There's green on the screen, which means it soon won't be seen. It's so. Yeah, okay, so here we go. So uh, this is limited stock. There's green on the screen, which means... It soon won't be seen. Yes, Dan. <laughs> Goodness me. I mean, it's, not oh. the, it's not the best catchphrase in the I need to world. learn all these, yep. It's not the best one, but it's the only one I could come up with a few years ago when I started working in this crazy world of craft, and it's sort of stuck. I mean, everyone, you know, says it. Most of the time. <laughs> uh, no. uh, also on the show, the dye brush. Yes, this is brilliant. And um, you've seen this actually out in uh, action a few times today. Really handy, particularly for your more intricate dyes. Uh, you get the, um, the foam pad to go with it as well. You can use that in conjunction to help you get all those bits and pieces out. And you're getting for a penny, the three replacement heads to go with your brush. That is five pounds or 9.96, saving of 40%. And another 25% comes off that if you are a platinum member, three seventy-five or seven dollars forty-seven, and uh, we've also got. We're going to start off with this as well. This discovery kit and the art liners, um, nineteen-piece collection. We're going to have a look at this first up. Actually, normally twenty-five pounds or thirty-two ninety comes down to thirteen pounds or sixteen ninety-six. Um, is the deal on this one. As I said, it is our Taste of the Next Level event too. This runs until the end of play tomorrow. So basically, wherever you are within Club Inspire, we're sort of bumping you up to the next level just for the weekend. So as I've been saying, if you're um, gold, for example, you get 20% off. Um, if you are a platinum member, you're getting that extra 5%, getting 25% off. And if you're shopping for the first time, your first purchase, you will get 25% off your first purchase. Plus you'll still get the 250 to bump you up to a uh, bronze member as well. So there's loads of reasons to shop with us over the course of the next couple of days. Um, let's keep it nice and interactive. Anything you want to ask over the course of this show, uh, anything that you want to uh, comment as well, you can do so on Facebook and on YouTube. And anything that you uh, want to send as far as pictures are concerned, any projects that you're working on, if you've got any of these goodies that you've already used and you want to show us what you've done with them, studio at crafterscompanion.co.uk. Right, let us get over to the other side of the studio and take a look at the um, discovery kit. Um, and the art liners that come with it. Um, these are kind of like dip your toe in the water kind of um, kits, these discovery kits, aren't they? They are, yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus a bit more on the yeah. art liners first, Ben, because we didn't get a chance to look at these this morning. And we'll come back to the discovery kit later because I think we'll have time now. We've lost that, that Rose Blooms kit. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to have a look at these because you might think, well, yeah, you know, so I'm not sure about them. But we've got six artist quality pens in here and they are your fine liners. So when you have a look in here, if I can just get, I can never get in my box. <laughs> I have this problem at home. They're so well packaged. There we go. And I'm just going to tip them out of here. And you've got six separate liners in there. But the idea with them is that you've got all different widths of nib. And I'm saying right from very, very tiny, tiny, tiny. I'm just going to show you on here. So the, the lowest one is 0 0.05, wow, is which is really, really fine. Yeah. Really. 
It's so, you know, I think these, I know I'm a big fan of zentangling. I've got a whole book of it at home that I do when I'm just doodling. I used to be the person in class, Ben, that get getting told off yeah. because I'd got doodles all down oh. the margins of my books and the teachers used to hate it. So you didn't I, draw I on to, your desk I as well, to, did you? No, I used, to get, I used to get into bother because don't draw in your book, Jan, don't draw in your book. And I was terrible. Same as when I'm in meetings and things like that. The pages have always got something down the side. So yeah, zentangling was ideal for me. And then the next one up from there is zero point five and you can see that they've got the finest of nib mm. going on on there they really are so for all that sort of really fine line drawing they're perfect so they literally just go up in gradient we've got slightly thicker one going on there and then in fact i've jumped haven't i i've jumped there yeah i've gone from 0 0.5 this is let me do that again oh, okay so yeah that was the fine one Right. All right, then we've got, we go to 0 0.1. I've got to say that looked a big difference yeah, between yeah. them, yeah. So there not a lot of difference in them. Uh -huh. So that was 0 0.1. Then we've got 0 0.3. Okay, so just to have a look on there, you can see we're actually getting that bit thicker now. Yeah. Then it was the 0 0.5, which is the one that we used earlier. So again, a bit thicker. So you might think, well, what do you want to use these for? We've got 0 0.8, and that's the thickest one of the actual lines. I'm going to give you an idea of something you can do with them in a second. This one is my favourite. This is the brush marker. So when you look at this one, oh, wow, yeah. you can see this has got that gorgeous brush on it. So you can get the much thicker strokes going on. So if you like to do any of the, uh, you know, the writing, that's what we're going to have a look at in a second. But as I say, things like... Um, Zentangling works with all the different thicknesses of lines. So, you know, I tend to go with the 0 0.8 for any of the outlining things, but then you can get right down to that little 0 0.05 to do the finest of art lines in there, just to break it all down. So if you haven't seen Zentangling before, have a look online, just, just have a pop it in a search engine. There's some fantastic artwork out there. But what we're gonna do today is actually create some lettering. And I'm actually gonna bring my rotating board in, Ben, because this is I ideal to work on this. So if I pop this in and actually clip this in place here, I've all I've done with my pencil, I don't know whether we can, can you actually pick that up on there? Yeah, yeah. fantastic. We're having a little zoom again. All right, so there all I've done with my pencil is just literally write out the word thank you. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use a combination of the pens. So I actually want the 0 0.8, I think, no, we'll go a little bit lower than that. We'll use the five for the lettering. I want the brush pen and I might need the eight as well. All right, so put those to one side. So I'm gonna use the five as the main one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace over the writing. So the reason I've just done it in pencil first was just to get the layout, get the, the size right. So all I'm gonna do with my fine liner now, and this is great because I've got the means to, you know, where I want to sort of, instead of having to get into those awkward angles, yeah. I can literally, just, I'm just moving it with my hand. You know, it's got that gorgeous ro means of rotation. You've got the clip to keep your artwork in place. If you're sketching and things like that, if you're wanting to shade in, you can literally get into all those areas. So all I'm going to do now, just to start with, and I may end up on the line, I may not, who knows. So we're literally going to go from here and then I'm just going to bring in the top bit. And I just want the basis of the word first. Okay. And then I can go back in with the other liners to actually bring in those thick and thin lines to give it the texture. Is this sort of setting you up to do like your brush lettering then? Is sort it? of, yeah. Yeah, if you'd like to do anything freehand. Mm. Um, so literally, as I say, some of it's staying on the line, but again, when you get to these areas where it's actually going at another angle, I can turn my page round. And then I'm just gonna bring in the bottom one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flick over to the brush marker to add in where I think those thicker lines need to be. Yeah. So we've got the rest of the letter in there. Okay, so that was just the 0 0.5. So that's about middle of the range. Then we need the brush marker. And what I'm going to do then is think about, with calligraphy, traditionally, the downstrokes are the thick ones. Yes. So I'm going to come in where I've got those, those sort of downstroke areas, and I'm going to bring this in and actually tail it off into the lettering so again on that h we'd start off sort of a bit narrower yeah and all i'm doing is sort of putting more pressure on the nib to get that thickness and then bringing it up again so everywhere we've got a downstroke there i'm just going to add that sort of thicker lettering so on the edge of the a 
on the N there, on this side of the N. And don't think, oh, it still looks a bit tatty. Don't worry about that because we're going to go back in with the other one again. So again, when we come down here, start off a bit thicker and then release it again. And then um, we just need a little bit in this end here. Yeah. Same again on here. We're going to come with the down strokes. We're going to go down. Tailor it off into the letter in here. This may sound like a silly question, but are you holding, because that has got a brush nib on it, are you holding that at a slightly different angle to if it was like a pen, for example, or is it still um, the same? Or you not necessarily, no. No, because the, the nib's doing all the work, so I've actually got that at the same angle that I would if I was using the okay. pen. Yeah. Yep. So again, just down the side of here, where you would come down naturally with your lettering. But then I'm going to go back in again now with that number five and literally go up the other side now to neaten it up. So literally here, where that wasn't necessarily the best angle, I'm just going to neaten it up with the pen. And again here, just round the outside. So I'm also like giving it a border. Yeah. And you'd be surprised how all of a sudden this actually starts to come into some sort of shape. So again, round the outside of the lettering. Is this something you do a lot of in your sort of craft, Jen? Um, I do like to do handwriting, I mm. must admit, and I still like to handwrite things like letters. I know we live in a world of social media and emails and, and texts and things like that, but I love actually doing proper handwriting. Uh, and it's something, again, that I used to teach at school, so the cursive style handwriting oh, yeah. was something the children were expected to learn. It's, it's, so, um, it's so funny, isn't it, when you think about um, letters... I, I, I can think back to my, like my first girlfriend um, that I had when I was about, what, sort of 14, 15. And, you know, back in the day before mobile phones and all these kind of <laughs> things, we used to write letters to each other. And it was so fantastic yeah. to get a handwritten letter in the post. You just don't, you just don't see that very often anymore, do you? It's, it's, all, it's all nice, isn't it, that we can do things like texts and FaceTimes and WhatsApp messages and all these kind of things. But, yeah, you forget the joy of receiving a... A handwritten letter. I love it, honestly. Um, we get involved as crafters. I know some of the guys out there will know um, about happy mail mm. and things like that. And, and it, or, or what we call racks, R-A-Ks, which are random acts of kindness. Yeah, yeah. So just sending somebody a bundle of something, just all nicely wrapped with lots of little bits and pieces in. And <laughs> my producer's saying a couple of fibres in there. <laughs> I think he's in a bundle of Johnny. fibers, is what he said. A bundle of yeah. fibers did it, honestly, yeah. they are naughty. Uh, so he can get his beer for his Saturday nights in the gallery. Uh, so but yeah. all I'm doing is just tidying up the edges of that so you can see where we're getting to with it. And then I've coloured in those little pieces at the edge there. Just pop this one in here. And then, again, I've just freehand... You can add in any kind of embellishments that you want to pop in there. But, you know, you can make your toppers. And honestly, I get lost in this. It's like I did go a little bit quiet just then. I was listening to what Ben was saying and I was listening to what Johnny was saying in my ear. And I'm just thinking, I'm not, I'm not actually saying anything. No, that's all right. It's all fine. You get lost in your craft. And then literally take it off the page there. I love doing the... Um, and again, this is just freehand, so I don't know where... Uh, let me just make sure. You might want to just zoom out a little bit for me, Charlotte, because I'm going to go around the edge of it now rather than... There we go. Look, she's on it. So literally one corner, and all I'm going to do is literally wavy uh, line. Yeah. All the way around the edge. It's a bit like the lines on your swash stamps, though. And it, yeah, it is. And deliberately not trying to get it straight. Because yeah. trying to draw a straight right line around there freehand would just not work. No. So literally wave it. And then I'm going to go around a second time. And where I've gone up, this time I'm going to come down and cross those lines over. And it's, I often do this around the edges of my cards just to give them a little bit of a, a board around there. So just create that movement in it and it just finishes them off nicely and then you can go in and add those little extra I'm just going to put some little uh, zigzags on it but these are great for this kind of thing so you know just have a look where they need to be and we'll mm. do a little as if, if it's been stitched That's stitching really cool. lines and I love any this this is all comes from the Zentangle it, yeah you can see there you know that you've got that I mean that's not far off the one that I did that's the one I've just done now that's the one that I did earlier I've just put some thicker lines on the flowers on that one so 
They're not bad, though. Do you know what? As much as I've enjoyed all of the demos that you've done today, um, and, and far more sort of intricate and longer demos, I think I've enjoyed watching that demo the most out of everything it's really you've done really therapeutic, today. Yeah. honestly, yeah. But again, you know, you can get all those different thicknesses of them with them. They are brilliant. They're a great addition to your stash. And when they're dry, the ink is permanent. So you can actually go over, um, you know, things that you've already done that you've put out. But once the, the actual ink's dry in here, and if you're not sure whether it's dry or not, just give it a blast with your heat tool. But once it's dry, it's actually waterproof. Um, so you could do your inking techniques over the top of there now and it wouldn't smudge. Marilyn's just saying um, on YouTube, I want those art liners to fill in places where you don't stamp. Um, sometimes I, I just um, find a small spot. Would they be useful for that as well then, Dan? Uh, yes, they are actually. Great. I use mine. I always have one um, in my bag. And I've actually got, it's the 0 0.8 on that one. And I always keep this in my bag with me just for that purpose. So if you do get a little bit that's missed, really great for just, and nobody would know. And as I say, because the ink dries waterproof, you can then go on to do your techniques around it and not worry about it smudging. Yeah. Yeah, they really are good. Um, brilliant for that. And it's awesome, isn't it? You, you just think about that. And as I say, I've sort of taken myself on a little trip back down memory lane. How nice it is to... Um, like hand write again and, and write letters. Yeah. Maybe, you know, if you're getting the art liners today with that discovery kit, this may well be your kind of trip into, um, you know, writing and calligraphy and all those kind of things. Um, Carline just saying on Facebook, uh, my grandfather, rest his soul, taught me calligraphy with his special pen and inkwell. Um, I still do it from time to time. Yeah, when you dip in your, your um, pen into the, the inkwell. We still had, when I was at school, we still had the, um, the desks there with the, uh, the little hole for the, um, the inkwell to go in. I make myself sound really old, but we had the, the full on, you know, your own desk. With the, you put all your yeah. bits and pieces in and you'd have like the, the hole for the ink. Oh yeah, well. I can remember those. That you used to keep your lunch inside the desk, didn't you? Before, yeah. yeah. Before you actually had the days of taking a lunchbox in, you used to put your lunch in there in the morning, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we actually, um, similar kind of thing to this, but they were actually called a handwriting pen, whereas these are more of an artist quality. But yeah, we used to teach the children at school used to earn their pen license. Yeah, they still have that now. Yeah, so they started off with the pencil and when they got to a level that was acceptable and we thought that they were okay with a pen, they used to get the pen license and get the handwriting pen and oh they were so proud of them and then actually learn the cursive handwriting style yeah my girls both learnt um, italic writing at school their oh, writing yeah. was super when they left primary school but then you know you lose it because you don't get a chance to put it into practice anymore but yeah my uh, my little grandson's a year old uh, next week and my, I know already, yeah, our producer's just saying already. <laughs> this time last year, we were waiting for him to arrive. <laughs> but my daughter's wanting to do a time capsule for his 18th birthday. So she's asked us to write some letters to him as an 18-year-old in the future, and she's going to put them all in. So again, I'm just going to, you know, I'm, it's going to be a very fancy letter from Nana, isn't it? It's got to be decorated and hand all the cursive right. These will come in great for that. Absolutely, yeah. well. Um, and don't forget, of course, you're not just getting those within this bundle, you're getting all of the art lines and you will get your discovery kit your concept design uh, discovery kit which is just absolutely brilliant and um, so kind of um, teaching you that concept design I love these because they, they're kind of um, targeted towards um, sort of specific crafters if you like so this one for the aspiring designer you've got artwork in there uh, from Cameron Backus and basically all um, the bits and pieces that you need um, to be able to do just that and when you look at exactly what you get in here as well the value for money is unbelievable because you're going to get uh, your five classic markers you've got another art liner um, pen in there as well and then a full list of step-by-step uh, -step instructions as how you can uh, craft along uh, with Cameron. So all the details about him as a designer and then um, basically uh, details about all of the uh, pens that you've got in there as well. And then a step-by-step -step guide for you to be able to um, create and then get to the design stage of, um, well, there's loads in here. You get all of the, um, uh, the different artwork with the bicycle and you get practice card in there too. And then you've got the ability to be able to pop together uh, amazing designs like this as well. I always think these are great for you know kids who are perhaps maybe wanting to get into art and design, maybe for like school projects and things like that as well. It's a really, really super kit. And as I say, when you consider that you're getting all of that, I, I get confused here. The penny deal, I, I just can't believe either of these are going for the penny. You're getting the discovery kit 
for 1p, yeah. uh, which is just absolutely unbelievable. And of course, all of the art liners that we've just shown you with Jan as well, those come with this deal too. So £13 or £16.96 um, is the deal on that today, uh, saving 11.98 or 15.94. Now, I just want to quickly show you as well the rotating board. Again, we've seen that so much today and indeed over the last few days. You can see how it comes into, um, into its use with all of the different crafts as well. Uh, basically, how this is working today, uh, this is normally 15.99. So you're getting this, but then we're also throwing in your watercolor card stock as well. 15 sheets of watercolor card for one P, it's a 20% saving and then 25% comes off that uh, price on screen if you're a platinum member, don't forget, £12, $15. And as we've seen, you know, we just saw Jan using the uh, rotating design board there as well. It's super handy because it does exactly what it says on the tin. You've got the ability to rotate whatever it is, your drawing, your sketch, uh, if you're doing some scrapbooking on here. As I said, I love uh, Debbie Fisher's idea of using this for your board games as yeah. well. It's just super handy. And, and, and as I said, it's not like a clipboard design this. It's really, really sturdy. You've got the ball bearing design on there as well, so you can go full 360 on the actual board itself. So whether it is your painting that you're doing, whether you're um, stamping, drawing, sketching, whatever it might be, this is perfect. And we chatted a lot about um, this earlier on, and actually the last time we had it on as well, great for left-handers too. So I, I remember, oh hello, oh, I'm ready. ready. Uh, I remember uh, one uh, kid I used to go to school with, I used, I used to marvel watching him write left-handed and how he would smudge all of his work as he went along. So again, if you have that particular uh, problem, this is perfect. You've got your bulldog clip, which um, comes off so you can clip it wherever you want on the board. And again, you know, if you're wanting to craft on the go, uh, once the weather gets nicer, maybe you're wanting to um, craft down in the garden or you know, when we can go on holiday again, ah, uh, holidays, uh, you want to be able to, you know, do some drawing and sketching whilst you're away. This is a perfect partner. Um, to take with you. I, I really, really love it. It's one of those things, Jan, isn't it? It's hard to explain because I know a lot of people might be going, well, it's just a board. It, it's kind of hard to kind of explain until you've got it and then you realise how handy it is. It is and how many different things you can use it for. Yeah. It is really a, re a, a nice solid surface just for starters. You know, like if you're working on your lap or anything like that, you've mm. got a really nice solid surface because I know I've tried stamping on trays and things like that and because there's a give in the middle, you don't get that solid stamp you yeah. get sort of patchy bits in the middle because there's not any you know support under the middle something like that it is so solid and to be honest as i say that rotation is completely 360 degrees on it yeah it really does you know there's all those ball bearings in the middle if we can just have a little peek can we get down the middle of there just to show you the uh we just have a little look. Where are back we? A bit, back a bit. There we go. Can you see them in there? Look, yeah. So there's all those little ball bearings which allow it to rotate. So wherever you want to use it, you've got that facility. And this is, is free. So literally, you know, if you wanted to have something clipped at this side to get away from it, if you wanted to have it clipped on this side and even just storing things, you know, like, I mean, I'm a dab hand at leaving things on my desk <laughs> and the, I'm the world's worst at putting, I'll get my, maybe my guillotine out, so do something with the guillotine, move it out the way and then about 10, 15 minutes, I'm like, where did that go? And it's stuck underneath my guillotine because I've picked it up with the guillotine. So just popping things, if you've got a project half finished at the end of the day, just clipping it on here to keep it safe until the next day. Just something as simple as that. But I love the idea with the game board. I know. That's the really, yeah, I, get, I like that one. Yeah, we still well have done. to do that before you go. Uh, we still have to set that, that date up um, on the Scrabble. <laughs> whether we do it online or whether we Challenge. do it in person. The I only thing that. I don't like with the online one, the reason I actually uh, deleted it, Ben, was because it allows what I call silly words. Oh, that's half the joy of it. No, I don't like silly words. I like proper words. Well, like QI and ZE. Yes, Z -E. and that's why I got rid of it, because I thought, nah, I'm not into that. Oh, that's why I like it, you see, because I see it more as like, you, you've got to try and come up with the big words, but then when you can't come up with the big mm. words of the seven letters, you then stick <laughs> in like the little ones that you don't like. It's a game of like, it's chess almost but also Scrabble at the same mm. time. It's all about tactics. You see, English language, most words that start with a Q are followed by a U. Not when you're playing Scrabble, no, you get a good you score see, for QI. It's not, not real. That's why I ended up deleting it, because I was getting very frustrated with it, because I wouldn't play those words and subsequently kept getting beaten uh, because the computer was playing yeah. them. So uh, You'd hate playing me then, because I play them all the time. That's how Do I you? Oh, I'm not so see sure. See a little I there with a triple uh, letter score, or put the Q there. <laughs> QI, what does that mean? <laughs> Who cares? Just scored 33. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, oh. Some lovely questions coming in. Kathy just saying, so relaxing to watch Jan. Uh, Lynn Harvey on Facebook. My cousin and me would write letters to each other every week when we were younger, and I still have all the letters now. Yeah, I've got loads of letters that um, you know I, I, I used to get sent from from various people. Um, you know, sort of when I was younger, I kept them because it's just amazing. You just don't get them anymore, do you? Uh, Marilyn said, um, "How did Jan make that look so amazing? I can't imagine what a mess mine would look like." Marilyn, I'm sure it wouldn't. Uh, and when you've got kits like this, it does make life a lot easier for you as well. Um, Susie T on YouTube is saying, I took a calligraphy class a million years ago when I was in high school. I loved it. Uh, I haven't used it though, uh, so lost it. I'm sure you would get it back very, very quickly. Uh, and just talking about the rotating board, Jane on YouTube saying, love my board now, makes colouring, etc. a lot easier. Um, let's have a look at some other goodies that we've got on the show as well. This was an amazing deal that we had earlier on. And uh, don't forget that this one is limited stock. There's green on the screen, which means... It's so not to be seen. That will do, Jan. Close. That was close, close enough. You got me uh, again. I was busy putting my time in on my foil on, press. I did it on purpose. I looked across. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't let myself out here, do I really? But no, listen, this is amazing. And, and as I say, I think we have got this the wrong way around for the fact... So this is a penny, right? That's crazy. Um, which is amazing. So you're going to get this normally for $14.99 or $20 for a penny. You've got this gorgeous um, frame that you can use in conjunction with your four press. And as we saw earlier on, what is so clever about this, you've got the foiled frame, but then the stamps that you've got that go with this kind of um, join up because when you uh, foil and stamp this out, you've got the, the, the space there, you see, which you can then join up with the gorgeous roses to create this beautiful frame, you know, for a card front, amazing. I just think as, um, you know, like uh, as a frame for your monogram, for wedding stationery as well. This is absolutely brilliant. And if you're saying to me, well, hang on a minute, I'd like some foil to go with this. Ta-da! You do get your foil as well. Your, I can't remember the name of it. I'm going to call it Spangly Disco. Silver Spangles. Silver Spangles. It is, it's that really sort of like um, holographic effect that you get with this. And you get five meters on a roll as well. So you've got plenty there um, to be playing along with. We've had so many great deals on today's craft board, but I want to kind of put this one forward and say that this is probably my deal of the show. The fact that you're getting this for a penny is unbelievable. Just before we go and have a look at this with um, Jan, actually, there's a question which has come in relating to uh, this Jan, which Jane asks. Um, she says, uh, Ben, could you please ask Jan if you can use the foil topper die without foiling um, I also just wanted to say thank you for my apron which uh, apron which I received today so could you use this uh, with, uh, without the foiling it doesn't work like a normal die does it basically uh, no this is actually a, what we call a foil stamp yeah so it's more like an embossing feature than an actual die there's no cutting element on this particular die the edges are meant to be foiled having said that you could probably get away with just embossing it so if you pop this through your Gemini with the uh, embossing the, the rubber embossing mat you would actually get these lines embossed into your cardstock but there aren't any cutting edges our cut our stamp and dies tend to be a wee bit darker gray the pale silver ones are what we call the stamps and as I say you get that sort of what happens is is it pushes these details into the card yeah and the foil sits inside that almost debossed effect so with the stamps, um, be, the reason we've called them stamps is because it's literally putting it into the card. The actual cut and stamp tends to be a bit darker grey so that you can recognise them. And that has a cutting edge. And that works slightly different with the foil press because we have to have that metal shim in there to protect it. And it's going to cut out a shape. So we've got lots of those on the market. But this particular one is just intended for actual foil stamping. OK. Yep. Good to know. Hopefully that has answered that question Jane any more questions I know it does get a little bit confusing doesn't it, it? does With, yeah when it comes to what we call stamps when it comes to your foil press yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but we're gonna have a look at that now I think I uh, think yes. Jane's got her foil press all that uh, heated up and yes it's all go. I'm ready it did its little beep earlier it was very rude it did it right in the middle of your talk didn't it outrageous. not timed it properly outrageous <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we're going to have a look at this one. It really is a pretty one, this. It's from the Garden of Love collection and it will obviously mix and match with anything, again, that you've got in your stash. You know, the stamps that we've used on here on the uh, on the, the inspiration on the packet are from the same collection, but who's to say that that's not something that you've got on another stamp set? Yeah. But the idea with this is that you get the metal and like we were just talking about, you can see the areas around here and don't think 
that there's something wrong with it with all the gaps in because it does have a gap in this top edge and it does have gaps in it round here and that's for the stamps that come with it to actually sit in the gap so when you stamp these in they sit and they actually go through the the pieces of foil and it's very very clever how it's been done again at this side there are actually areas in here where it looks as if the line's broken so don't be worried when you get yours it is meant to look like that so the main thing that we need to do when we're working with the foil press is heat up whatever metal you're working with and in this case we always say sort of a third of the plate is a small die two thirds of the plate is medium and I was sort of like I think this one's in between so I sort of went in between with the timings and just by testing this at home I established that we needed 20 seconds on the clock just to warm it up yeah so I'm going to pop it on there I'm going to pop the lid on and we're just going to press that start button to, to warm that up and then this time I'm actually going to fo uh, foil onto some vellum all right, we're going to make a, a, like an order of service card for a wedding. Oh, yeah. Um, so you could print on the back of it your order of service. You could make a mix and match set of, um, of stationery if you were, you know, sort of looking at wedding stationery. So this is just vellum out of, uh, out of my kit. And I haven't actually got the, uh, the instruction book. I couldn't find it in the, uh, in the cupboard today. But um, when I looked at mine at home, it said if you're using vellum, you needed a card shim. Because the vellum's very thin, we need a card shim in with it as well and all that is is literally a piece of card to build up the thickness so all I've done is actually Ben asked me this morning about cutting the yeah. foil and the only reason I've done that is so that I didn't have to use as big a piece of foil because although you've got five meters on here I really don't want to waste it as much you know it's beautiful it's in lovely there. foil isn't that it that aurora borealis in there and you've got all that lovely so and there's five meters of foil so as i say i'm a bit stingy with things like that i like things to last so literally just split it so it goes a bit further and then again i've got a piece that's bigger than i actually want it to be that i've put over the top and then i'm gonna i did cut some card what have i done it's there i'm gonna say i've just cut some cardstock this is just a piece of stamping card so you've got something for it to actually work with and then pop the top on there just butt it up to the edge of it and make sure when you're using your foil press as always that this comes out nice and straight mm -hmm. and then it's going to pop through my Gemini Junior. Now if you've got the large Gemini we do an adapter plate for this size of foil press but we've also now got the large platform as well so whichever way you want to go with this and again let's just pop that out. The card shim literally has done its job. It's just added that bit of extra pressure. And you can see there, can we just zoom in on that one? See if we can pick up where it's actually, I was talking about embossing the card earlier. Uh, can you see yeah. how it's put the, um, the detail into there? Yeah. So this has pushed it in, which has debossed it. If I just flip it over there, it's not quite, I'd need a bit more pressure to get it. As I say, you'd need your rubber embossing mat in there with it. And obviously I wouldn't be heating up the metal, but you get the idea with it there. And then on the vellum, let me just pop this to one side now, out of the way for a second. Oops, it is. There we go. And then we'll do that lovely reveal on here. So we just get that into, uh, into shot and dazzle you with all the, uh, the spangles. Glasses on, sunglasses. So again, when this comes off here, there's been a little bit too much pressure in there. Can you see how it's just caught in the middle here? Yeah. But as I say, if you've got um, a pencil rubber or even better, one of the wax artist rubbers, oh, yeah. that should actually get all this off the edge here. But you can see oh, where yes. that gorgeous foiling has taken on the edge there. So we've just got a little bit of overfoiling. If that happens, just turn the time down. It just means that we, because I was stood talking, that metal's heated up maybe a bit longer than it needed to. Yeah. So we've got that there. So when I bring in, you can see the one that I did at home there as literally we've got the idea of it there. Exactly the same thing. I've just not got the overfall. And do you know there. what as well, and, you should, and earlier on, I, I, I didn't say, because I don't like to say sometimes, but when you uh, look around the edge of the foil there, you can see little um, gaps and little bits and pieces there. So earlier yes. when you did it, I thought, oh, it's not, it's not quite worked correctly, but actually that's there for a purpose, isn't it? It is. That's what I was talking about earlier, yeah. Ben. You think that you've actually missed parts yeah, yeah, of it, but let alone has it got a gap here. You can just, what Ben's talking about is here. Yeah. We've got some patchy bits and here it's sort of like it's hit and miss, but that's there because it's intended to work with the stamps. So when we actually get the stamp sets, if you think, let me just get the right one. We need the one with the little rosebud on here on this side. And if I pop it back over the white, you'll be able to see a bit better. 
Yep. So where we've got the gap yes. here, this bit here is actually just part. When you get close up to it, you can see that there's the outline of the little rosebud there. Uh, so with okay. the stamp, you would actually position this into that gap. And then there's even a break in it here, which where the little leaf at the bottom Incredible. comes through the foil. And honestly, again, really, really cleverly done. So the idea is that you can stamp into those gaps. The same with the top one. This is all broken here so that the stamp can come through the gap and fill the gap in, all right? And we did that this morning. If you tune into the show that we did this morning, we actually stamped onto the card and got those elements in place. Now, I'm actually gonna show you a different way of doing it this time. So I'm gonna pop the stamps to one side because I've already stamped those out separately onto some cardstock this time and just colored them in. I wanted a nice sort of pale blue theme going on here for this one. So I was just pretending that our wedding theme was gonna be pale sort of bluey turquoise. Okay. And I'm actually gonna pop these over the top as like a, a decoupage piece, so like a cheats way, but you've still got room for those pieces to come through the foil yeah. there. All right, so I'm literally gonna pop them on like so. So what I was going to do then, is I'm going to build up the, the, the vellum. And one of the biggest questions we get asked about vellum is how to attach it. So there's several ways of doing it. If you wanted to attach the whole piece, if you attach this to double-sided adhesive, which we sell on our website, literally stick it onto a piece and remove the backing. You've got all over adhesion then that doesn't show when you actually press it and I would get put that down and then I would get my bone folder and give it a good sort of probably do it from the back so that you don't damage the foil in to get all the air bubbles out of the um, double-sided adhesive yeah. but all I'm going to do for mine is I know that I'm actually going to have um, those flowers in place so I'm going to take my tape runner and where those gaps are here I'm literally going to pop a little bit of tape under there and I'm going to pop a little bit here because I know those flowers are going to cover that up and then line this up to leave my border and what I like to do with them is use the little brads so I've just picked out four pale blue ones and I'm literally going to use my pokey tool to go through the corner of the card like so what are you got there brads do you say brads oh yep yeah, oh, brilliant. so it's like split pins. Yeah, yeah. So I've got them in all different colours. I've had them young, so I thought this was a great time to use some of them. And then you just split the little legs at the back, and that's going to hold that in place. And I'm going to do that on all four of the corners. So we'll make the holes. So just be careful. If you don't trust yourself with the pokey tool, one of the easy ways is a little bit of um, blue tack or white tack or whatever brand you've got out there, pop your card over it and pierce into that. And that way you're not gonna stab yourself with the pokey tool, which I have done on many occasion. So literally just in the corners, I'm just eyeballing that sort of space, pop them through and then just split those little legs at the back. And it's a great way of keeping it in place. And it's an added embellishment as well yeah, for yeah. your card. And I really sort of enjoy um, using these when I'm working with vellum. But I've got that little bit of um, glue underneath it as well, as I say, where we're going to put the, the flowers on. So just split that last one, you can see there. And now we've got the makings of that design. Now you can just see, I can see here where that tapes underneath. And this is what people are always asking me. They're like, Jan, whenever I stick vellum down, I can see the tape. Mm. But because we're going to put these over the top, nobody's going to know. So this one is actually going to go at the top of here. So I can now use my glue. And you can see every time that deal we've got on with all the glues in there, the Kalal comes in handy. Is that the Get I've, It Got It Good deal? Yeah, I've been honestly been using this all day. Every time you've, uh, we've, we've done one of the demos, I've been reaching for that Kalal. It's definitely a go-to. So that one's going to stick and just onto the white cardstock here. I haven't printed out an order of service, but the idea was is that you could have all your details on the back of here. And then this would match all the... Um, rest of the stationery that you were doing. Yeah. And then from one of the other stamp sets I've got at home, I've got my order of service banner, which I've just done in some silver embossing powder there just to echo the foil. So we'll actually stick that one down as well on the bottom. So that one's just gonna go across there like so. So it's not actually a card, this one. No. It is just gonna be a single piece. As I say, we're gonna use our imagination 
and imagine that we've got that lovely order of service printed on the back there. All right. And then what I've done, and this is part of the Garden of Love, if you've got the collection, it had lots and lots of lovely sentiments yeah. in here. So what I've done is I've actually die cut it. And I usually die cut it a couple of times to make it a bit more substantial because they can sometimes be a little bit thin when you've only done them once. And then I've actually foiled it with the same foil. So you can foil your die cuts. Okay, so all I've done is cut a piece of foil. If you imagine this is your foil. And I've put this onto my foil press. Let me just bring this back in so that you can see what I mean. Take that one off there. So I've literally put the foil on the foil press, yep. put the die cut face down, uh -huh. okay, put a card shim over it, put the lid on it, and you heat it for about 10 seconds. And the beauty of this particular method is it's, you can't really overheat it because the object is to get the whole thing covered in foil. So you want it literally. So it doesn't matter if it sticks because that's what you actually want it to yep. do. So about 10 seconds, heat it up, pass it through your Gemini. And what it does is it transfers the foil onto the front of your sentiment. So this is actually now gonna match what I've got in the middle. Perfect. So let me pop that one back around there again out of the way. And I've just run this through the, um, the Xyron just so that we've got some sticky on it. And if I bring this back into shot, we're gonna put this on the center as a sentiment there. So always and forever, which suited the, uh, the theme for the order of service. So let's just pop that one on there whoops like so looking lovely got a few questions which i'll fire at you in um just a few moments jan pardon got a few questions that yeah, i will fire at you in just a fine. few moments time so always and forever and then i'm going to use some of my uh 3d glue gel to just pop these and i've just shaped them a little bit with my uh i love the fact that you can shape cardstock so that it's not so flat yeah so we're going to go at the bottom with the one with the rose the little bud and again, just pop a couple of blobs of this on here. Lots of love, by the way, uh, for your um, tips with the brads. It seems that there's lots of crafters who've got tons of brads who don't know what to do with them. So yeah, I think they'll get be following them out your for little your tip And as I say, you've got an added embellishment there yeah. as well. It's not sticking down very well, actually, because I think it's just the heat from it. If, if the piece of cardstock's half as warm as I am, that's why it's not sticking. It does it's get the, warm in here, doesn't it's it? It's all the lights, I, I think. Know. Yeah, the overhead lights. It's uh, slowly cooking us as we go through the day. Yeah, that's it. The joys, you Pro see. Proper studio now, proper lights, proper yep. cameras. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. All mod cons in here, isn't it? All mod cons. And then this one, again, we've got those little breaks here in the foil. So I'm just going to lie the leaves through there and then at the top to match it up at the top there. And I just think it gives a really nice look on there. And then if you wanted to, I couldn't make my mind up whether I wanted to punch a hole in the top and have some ribbon to make it like a tag or not. I couldn't quite make my mind up on that one. So I left that separate. But the idea is, is that you've got this for the... Um, you know, your design. And mm. then, as I say, on the back, you could have your order of service for your uh, your ceremony there. And then just a top tip with the glue, if you haven't come across this before, get a lot of people say my glue's dried up. And once this type of glue gets air involved in it, it will dry. Right. So just squeeze the, the tube until the glue makes a little dome at the top. Uh-huh. Just see. Yeah. Yeah. And then put your lid on. Yep. So put your lid on so that it's meeting the glue and you know then that there's no air trapped in there. So next time you come to use it, it will work. So just a top tip with the Kalal glue. But other than that, we've got that secured with the, uh, the brads there. And just to show you that gorgeous frame with that spangled foil on it. It's beautiful. Silver spangles. Yeah, spangly I love that name. disco. That's what I call Beautiful. it. Beautiful. Um, yep. Just brilliant again. Just to reiterate again, because Will has just asked. So I obviously he obviously didn't hear you um, mentioning this earlier, because you've already answered this. But the Garden of Love, the Garden of Love frame, can it be used without a foiling machine 
yes it can but it's not supposed to be it can as yeah, i say but, but it will just emboss yes. there's no cutting edge on it because it's what we class as a stamp in connection with foiling which does get a little bit um, confusing because we tend to think of yeah. these as being stamps i get that but uh, in foiling terms this pale gray is just stamping so it's intended to pick up the foil around the raised parts but those raised parts don't have any cutting edge so it won't cut anything out but if you remember when we use the shim and there's not enough pressure here because I didn't have the embossing mat in but you can just see there where it's made the impression yeah yeah so with the embossing mat in there as well I wouldn't be using the um, the foil press at all I would just literally put this onto the card I would line up my normal embossing sandwich for the Gemini and run it through your Gemini and what it will do is actually push this detail into your cardstock to give you that but it's a debossed effect rather than an emboss yep uh, thank you for that Denise is saying love all the different embellishments used for the card thank you Jan and Kathy saying such a brilliant price for this die and foil and um, there was a question about the um spectrum or pens that we had yesterday i think i can answer this angela just saying do you get the, sk uh, the skin tones in the 48 piece set of spectrum pens from yesterday the portrait blends it's all it's all of them isn't it so you do the portrait blends are the skin tone colors yes so you do get them because it was the i'm trying to remember yesterday fear idea but it was the full collection of tri blends that we were bringing to you so yes. angela yes you do um, and there's a question here. Well, a few a few people are wondering actually, Diane, uh, and also Karen. And this was brought up earlier on, and I don't think we got the answer to this. Uh, what's your nail polish colour? Ooh, <laughs> a few people are asking. That's a good question. All I can tell you is that it comes from the brand that ends in seven. Seven. Mm. Seven. Ends in seven. Chemist seven. Am I allowed seven? to say what it is? Just say it. It's Boots number seven. Oh, yeah. Yeah? I yeah. thought I was being quite cryptic then. Yeah, Chemist seven. <laughs> but no, as far as colour's concerned, I, I will have a look when I get home. And if I remember it, when I get home at 10 o'clock tonight, I will have a look and I'll pop it on my social media for you. you. Know, I won't worry about mentioning brands and stuff. You should, you should see when Craig's here. I, I sometimes feel that he start, he start, he, it was a day a few weeks ago, he just started mentioning every brand. And we were like, are you oh. on commission? Like the amount of brands he was, he was, he was naming. Yeah. Well, we just say that other nail polish brands are available. That's what they say. <laughs> but I quite like the, the sort of like the nude shades. I'm not a big fan of bright nail varnish. Yeah. Especially when my nails aren't very long either. Well, do you know what? After we've had such a brilliant uh, day today, who fancies a bit of a sing song? Oh, Yay! why not? Um, so if you, uh, well, I'm sure you've already heard about this now. Uh, I've had about like 21,000 views um, across our socials wow. on our little crafty sea shanty um, about the crafty man Craig. Um, so we thought we'd, uh, we thought we'd give it another play. So here you go. There once was a man who was very crafty. His name was Craig from Carnoustie. He joined the team on Crafters TV. Oh, crafty Scottish man craft. Soon may the crafty man come to bring us demos and inspiration. Each day when his crafting is done, he might do a Facebook Live. He wanted to prove he was the man, but he lost at Craft Wars to Leanne. But two weeks later, he began. Oh, crafty Scottish man craft. Soon may the crafty man come to bring us demos and inspiration. Each day when his crafting is done, he might do a Facebook Live. He did so well on Crafters TV, Sarah sent him off to Germany, where he did some work for QBC. Oh, crafty Scottish man craft. Soon may the crafty man come to bring us demos and inspiration. Each day when his crafting is done, he might do a Facebook Live. His crafting skills, they aren't half bad. In fact, I'd say they're totally rad. That's mainly down to his favourite brown pads. Oh, crafty Scottish man craft. Soon may the crafty man come to bring us tales and inspiration. Each day when his crafting is done, he might do a Facebook Live. The crafters, they loved him a lot for his charm and skill. They went quite potty. They nicknamed him the hardy Scotty. Oh, crafty Scottish man craft. 
Soon may the crafty man come to bring us demos and inspiration. Each day when his crafting is done, he might do a Facebook Live. In the crafting world, he's standing tall. He's the best Scottish crafter of them all. Catch him Monday to Friday on his wake-up call. Oh, crafty Scottish man, craft. Soon may the crafty man come to bring us demos and inspiration. Each day when his crafting is done, he might do a Facebook Live. There you go, our little uh, crafty sea shanty, Lynn just saying, love listening to the crafty man sea shanty. Uh, brilliant, thank you, Lynn. And also Patricia just saying, has Ben started dressing to match the products next to him? Today's shirt matches the pinky rose color next to him. Yeah. And yesterday's bright squarish shirt, don't call my shirt square. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, his, his bright squarish shirt matched the boxes of tribalands that were next to him. I would like to claim, Patricia, that I am doing that on, no, Exactly, Producer Johnny. Sorry, I take back what I was about to say. Of course, you think I just... No, of course, I, 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 we go we go and check the set now and we prep the products and I go, what do you think is going to match with this? And Producer yeah. Johnny goes, what about this? And that's how we do it. I mean, it is a perfect match though, that pink, isn't it? Really thought that one through today. I'm very impressed. Johnny, what we sell it tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> what? Tape pens? Um, Purple. <laughs> I don't know if I've got purple with me. But anyway, thank you for that, um, <laughs> Patricia. Yeah, might not be matching tomorrow, folks. Uh, and Denise on, Denise on YouTube says, uh, when will Jan be on again? I don't want to miss her because she gives great tips. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Do you know, I love being here and, and, and sort of uh, doing this for you. But I'm actually having a week off next week because it's my grandson's first birthday next Aww. week. So I've got a week's holiday book next week. But I will be back on Sunday the 21st and then Monday the 22nd. So two con consecutive days uh, I've got some fun actually because I think if I remember rightly if my good old memory serves me rightly I think there's some mixed media thrown into that weekend so I've not got all the details yet but I'll leave that one with you and if there's anything in particular mixed media that you want to think about you can find me on social media just drop me a note on there and I'll see if I can incorporate that into the show for you so uh, we need to think about what products we're going to have on yet and I'll talk to the girls about that but I'm sure I think it's on the Sunday I'm not sure if it's not a master class yeah. yeah with um, the, with some mixed media products yes my producers just so my memory's not as bad as I thought it was yes so it's uh, on one o'clock on the 21st. So yeah, if there's anything mixed media-ish that you know that you would like to have a think about, I can't promise that I can get them on. It depends on product availability, but just pop on my social media and let me know and I will try my best to cover it for you. Yeah, you looking can, forward to that one. It's going to be awesome. And of course, you can catch up with all of us. We've all got our own pages on uh, Facebook yep. and on Instagram as well. So lots of ways to get in touch. And I've got some brilliant news for you, Jan, as well, because you know you're, uh, you're in on that Sunday and Monday. Yes. So am I. Oh, hey. fantastic. Hey. Yep. Good team, you see. But I mean, top team, aren't we, eh? Yep. Uh, virtual fist bump. Go on. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> or an elbow bump. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, just brilliant. Uh, Patricia just saying, no, 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 I didn't mean square in a bad way. Uh, it was, no, I didn't. I know. I was only winding you up, Patricia. I was just only winding you up. Just when it gets to this time of night, yeah. honestly, we lose the plot, don't we? It's... Uh, <laughs> Well, um, let us quickly, before we go, uh, show you, we've, you've, you've, all, you've almost, you have almost uh, finished us off on this show. Cleaned us out, flying yeah. flying out the door. We've hardly got anything left to sell. <laughs> uh, but this dye brush, super, super duper handy. Uh, if you want to go for this today, you get the, um, the dye brush with your, um, your sponge background. So again, just you know, using the two together makes it nice and easy for you to get all the bits and pieces out of those dies. And then you're getting your replacement brush heads as well. Three of those. I can't imagine you'll need to use those um, all that quickly. The, these no, they like should last a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should. I've not changed mine in, in my uh, tool brush yet and I do use it quite a lot. Uh, those are 1p by the way, the, um, the, the die brush heads 1p, so uh, £5.996, uh, saving over 40%. That's just about it. Just to say of course, uh, we will be here tomorrow, well I will be here with Debbie Fisher, I don't know why I said it like that, Debbie Fisher, <laughs> uh, uh, for the final uh, day of our Taste of the Next 
level event. Uh, so of course, all through tomorrow as well, you'll be stepping up to the next level, getting an extra discount on everything that you're buying from us. And of course, still, if you're a new shopper, if you make your first purchase, you'll still get a 25% discount off your first shop as well. And we've got a new show. We've got so many new shows at the minute. So we've had the craft along, which we did yesterday. Tomorrow, we have got a craft class or craft class depending on where you're from uh, that's going to be in the schedule tomorrow and it's a gemini 101 so if you are someone who wants to know all about the gemini machines which one might be most suited to you or if you're thinking of getting a second one which one might be the one to go for that will be the show to watch second chance sunday tomorrow of course as well uh, where we will be um, looking through um, some of the best deals of the week and the cards of the week crowning our crafter of the week and of course uh, either end of that we've got the craft vault as well uh, yes jan could be crowned the craft of the week she's keeping her fingers Got crossed. Everything crossed and thanks so much for today Jan you've been brilliant as always you are welcome I've loved it yep looking forward to being back later on in the month excellent we'll have a brilliant week off Thank I you. will see you tomorrow as I say back here on Crafters TV in, uh, have a brilliant rest of your uh, Saturday and I'll see you tomorrow morning bright and early uh, for more Sunday shenanigans here on Crafters TV bye bye